And, uh, you know, it's a, an encouraging psalm, as are so many of the different psalms, uh, songs of encouragement. But I just want to look this morning at four major reasons for uh, praising God. Aren't you glad that we have a God that we can praise who's worthy of our praise? And as a result, uh, he, he likes to be praised. You know, we as individuals like to be praised too, don't we, in many cases. And, you know, God's no different, and he wants to be praised as well too. But I believe to praise God is, is vital if we're going to have a good relationship with him. You know, uh, He's good to us. I'm glad that God is good to us and he meets our needs. And, and sometimes if we don't think our need is met, he still knows about it and he still cares about it and he's still there working in our lives and helping us through that. You know, with regard to praising him, and there's different ways of praising him, and that's how I want to look at this morning, four reasons why we should praise him. But there's several different ways in which we can praise him and one is simply by in our prayers praise him in our prayers and the other is by singing and sharing and living there's some different ways that we can praise him layman strauss says pray uh, prayer thrives best in the soul of a thankful heart and norval hadley said praise is not only the gateway into the presence of god it is also the means by which we release the supernatural power of God into the situations of need. You want God to work in your life? Praise him for some of the ways in which he has worked. And uh, I believe it makes a big difference in as far as some of the other situations that we face. But probably the book that we read most about praising God is the book of Psalms. And uh, so many of the different Psalms are just psalms of praise for God, to God, for who he is and what he's done. And there are some uh, requests as well in there too. But just let's begin by just looking this morning at four major ways in which we can praise God, things that we can praise God for. And I see in verse 1, praise to God for universal salvation. Psalm 100 verse 1 says make a joyful shout to the lord all you lands uh, universal salvation aren't you glad that god came that god the son came down here to earth to pay the price that you and i can't pay you know there's no way we could pay the price that is required only he could do that and he was willing to come down here to earth and to live here and to show us how to live show us who the Father is, what the Father was like. Remember he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then to go to the cross and to, to pay that price. And not only just to die on the cross, but to resurrect again. You know, had he just died only um, without the resurrection, I don't believe that there would have been a great deal accomplished. A lot of, a lot of men have died, haven't they? And many of them on the cross back in those days. But the fact that he rose again separates him from any other uh, religious leader or whatever else. But note the words, all ye lands, or we could say, all you people, wherever you are, here in America or some foreign country, wherever it might be, praising God for salvation. I'm glad that God didn't only save, come to save Jews or that he didn't only come to save Americans or some other country, you can put it in there, in China, Africa, whatever, that he didn't only come to save these, this particular group of people, but he came to save everybody. doesn't matter who you are, where you are, uh, other things about you. He came to save any who would call upon him. And what a tremendous thing that is. You know, the plea here is that all mankind would offer up prayers of praise to God for his provision of salvation the question this morning is have we accepted that provision have we put our trust in what god the son did for us there on the cross if we haven't we're the bible according to the bible we're still lost in our sins and headed for a christless eternity in hell simply because we haven't done what needs to be done but I, i'm just glad that he came 
to die for me. And I try to make it a point to thank him every day for that. And I hope you do as well, too, that uh, you thank him for coming to die, not only for you or for, or for myself or for yourself, but for the, for the whole, those who accept, regardless of where they are. If we had nothing else to thank him for, wouldn't that be enough? You know, just to thank him for salvation, that he's provided that for us. I mean, I'm glad that it's, it goes beyond that, but uh, just the fact that if that's all we had to thank him for, what a, what a privilege that would be that we have uh, there to, to be thankful. Just some of the verses that are jotted down here in your, in your notes, and I'm going to read them, although there is one wrong verse and that is the uh, First Timothy chapter two, verse eleven, it said something about women and whatever else. And that's probably not one that we'd care to apply. It didn't apply here. But anyhow, the other verses there, John three sixteen, we're all familiar with that. I'm sure. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And did you pick out the word whosoever? Doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what kind of person you are how good or how bad you've been, he's able and willing and wanting to save anyone who will believe and put their faith in what the God the Son did there on the cross. Acts 2, verse 21 says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not will be or maybe could be or whatever else, but it says, and If you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. That's what God's Word says. Do you believe God's Word? Uh, if you don't, you have difficulties. But I, I believe God's word, and I know that that's true, that if we call out, he's given us a promise that we will be saved. And in Second Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Not willing that any should perish, but that everybody should come to repentance. That's God's desire. God doesn't want people to go to hell. Hell was not designed for man. Hell was designed for the Satan and his angels, his demons. It wasn't designed for people. And yet people choose to go there. And you go there by choice. People say sometimes, well, God doesn't, God doesn't send people to hell. That's true, he doesn't. Whoever goes there has chosen to do that, either willfully or by not accepting the work that God the Son did there on the cross. But just the fact that uh, mankind around the globe can be praising God for providing salvation for anybody who accept the work that God the Son did there on the cross. Praise to God for universal salvation. Praise to God for accepting us in verses 2 and verse 4. Verse 2 says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And then down in verse 4, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him, and bless his name. Praise to God for accepting us. You know, he wouldn't have had to do that. Uh, he could have, I believe he could have said, No, I'm not going down there. I'm not going to go down there and go through all that torture and uh, do those things for people who hate me anyhow. And, well, Jerry was talking about this in Sunday school this morning, about how God loves us, even though we don't love him. He still loves us and uh, has made that provision of salvation possible for us. Imagine the God of all creation caring about me and about you, about each one of us. Uh, well, that's something else, isn't it? Sometimes we wonder, how could he be interested or even caring about me when there's billions of people and so many other things to to be concerned with, and that he's just as concerned with each one of us as he is with anybody else. And that, what a tremendous blessing to me that is, uh, at least, for accepting us. Yeah. And because of his providing salvation to all mankind, we can serve him with gladness. I hope that's true in each of our lives, that we serve him with gladness. Uh, verse 2 says, enter his presence with, thank, with, with singing. Enter his presence with singing. 
And I believe one way to to praise God is through our singing. If you don't believe it, just our, our music in general, maybe. And, you know, there are times, well, we it's even scriptural, isn't it? There are times when, do you remember when King Saul got upset and uh, was and David came in and played his harp and soothed his anxieties or whatever it was. And we've even experienced this in our own lives as I know Virginia with her keyboard. And uh, sometimes, you know, just when you're down and discouraged and things don't seem to be going right, just to, to listen to music. I don't know about you, but I like music. I like good Christian music. Not some of a lot of the stuff that we have today. But uh, I like good Christian music, and it does something to us inside, doesn't it? It encourages us, and it blesses us. And as a result of that, we can join in, in many cases, in singing along with these different uh, songs. You know, one of the songs that I, I appreciate, and it's in our back of our hymnals or front of our hymnals, it's one place or the other, it says, Be Thou Exalted. And you can see that in the front of your hymnal or back there, whichever it is. But just one example of praising. And in some of the songs we sang this morning already, you know, praise him, praise him. Jesus our blessed redeemer. And uh, all these different songs that are written to sing praise to him. Matthew Henry says, holy, by, by holy joy, we really do serve God. By holy joy, we really do serve God. Just the joy of the Lord. You know, I can't help but think there of uh, Nehemiah. I think it's chapter 8, verse 10, or chapter 10, verse 8. The last part of the verse says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. You lose that joy, and guess what? You lose your strength. And if you lose your strength, guess what? Satan can knock you around and kick you around and do whatever he wants, as long as you are basically whatever he wants, whatever God allows. But if you don't have that strength to withstand him, uh, and that strength comes from the joy of the Lord. Enter his praise with thanksgiving. You know, I believe God loves music, and there will be a lot of singing throughout eternity when we get to heaven. We've heard just recently and in the past about how uh, when someone is dying, sometimes they'll hear music. And Virginia's dad, when he was dying, said, you know, hear it in 16 parts. And I don't understand all that, but uh, I think it was 16 or was it 8? Eight parts, okay. Uh, you know, just uh, music in heaven. What a what a tremendous, tremendous thing that's going to be. Enter his presence with thanksgiving, with singing. And then enter his gates with thanksgiving. In verse 4, which is what it says there, enter his gates with thanksgiving. You know, if you're having trouble figuring out what to thank God for, read Psalm 103. I'm not going to take the time to read it. You can read it. If you're having trouble, what can I thank God for? Look at, look at Psalm 103, and you'll find numerous different ways in which you can thank God for the many blessings and things that he does for you. You know, in reading through this, I found 19 different ways in which we can be thankful to God. We can praise God for his blessings and, and just for being thankful. You know, we're coming up before too long with Thanksgiving, the national day that's set aside for Thanksgiving. And uh, why do we need to wait until then? Why not get started early? Why not start January 1 and throughout the rest of the year? But, Or at least starting now, say, and just being thankful to God for something. You say, well, I don't know what I can be thankful for. The fact that you're breathing is something to be thankful for, isn't it? You know, there are people who lost their lives this past week. Uh, we can be thankful that God is, is giving us so many different ways in which we can be thankful and enter his courts with thanksgiving. You know, a thankful heart is not only a praying heart, but it's also a heart that serves uh, well. And in verse 4 again it says, Enter his courts with praise. You know, I believe the only way we can come into God's presence or the only way we should come into God's presence is with singing and thanksgiving and praise and 
that's what we need to have if we're going to have a right relationship with God. We need to have that kind of a heart and a kind of a spirit that praises him for who he is and what he does. And I'm glad we have that kind of a God that's worthy of that. Praise to God for universal salvation. Praise to God for accepting us. Praise to God for who he is there in verse 3. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. God created us. God made us. He made us just the way he wanted us. And you might say, well, yeah, but I have a friend who has Down syndrome, or I have a friend who has this problem, or that problem, or whatever. You know, and I think of the young guy from Australia, I can't remember his name now, has no arms or no legs. You know, and yet he's still still a, a believer, and he's thankful to God for what he does and is able to do with his limited. You say, you know, if God made us that way, why be thankful? Well, I believe there's reasons that we can be thankful that way. Just the fact that they're able to think. And, you know, there are some that aren't even able to do that, isn't there? You know, they're not able to think because of the physical difficulties that they have. And there's courts with praise in these different ways. And then the praise to God for who he is in verse 3. Uh, again, verse 3 says, Know that he is the Lord, he is God, and he made us. Uh, He's God. Know that the Lord, he is God, the only living and true God. There's none other. You know, there's all kinds of people who try to find all kinds of things to make a God out of, but there isn't any other. Have you ever stopped and just thought about that for a minute, that there's only one God, none other, and who he is and what he wants to do for us and the ways in which he blesses us and how we can praise him back for that. You know, I don't believe that we'll ever really be able to fully grasp that thought of uh, thinking about God until we get to heaven, or knowing God and who he is until we get there. And wow, I wonder how much our eyes are going to be opened when we see him face to face and are right in his very presence. What a, what a tremendous time that'll be. Are you looking forward to that time? You know, I, I, I hope you are, because if you're not, uh, you're going to be disappointed when that time comes. But, you know, as God shows himself more and more to us, we have all the more reason to praise him. We've seen that this past week, or past month, I should say, as we've traveled and some of the different things that we saw and how God watched over us in these different areas. We came on an accident and we were probably just, I'm going to say seconds maybe even, uh, from possibly being involved with that. It happened right before we got there. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm glad that God watches over us. And uh, through no fault of our own or anything else, but just because he loves us. And as his children, he wants what's best for us. You know, we've all had children here, I assume, and uh, you ever want what's bad for them? You ever want to do something that would harm your children? I don't think you would, would you? At least if you're a normal parent, you would. Would not, I mean, want that to happen. And God's the same way. God doesn't want what's harmful to us. He wants what's best for us. And as a result of that, we can praise him and just simply know that he is God. Our praise needs to be intelligent, knowing who we praise and why we praise him know whom we praise and why we praise him you know it doesn't matter what anybody says about god it doesn't change the facts does it god's god and he's going to be god whether anybody says there is no god you ever heard anybody say there is no god we hear that frequently don't we you know what the bible says about those kinds of people it says the fool has said in his heart there is no god and uh that doesn't say very much for that kind of a person. I don't care how smart they are, how intelligent they are. If they say there is no God, the Bible calls them a fool. That's what God says. But, you know, just there's none like him, past, present, or future. There's only one God, and there's not any more than that. 
You know, Satan desires to rob God of his of his glory, but it's not going to happen. Down through the the from the beginning of time on, Satan is trying to rob rob God of his glory, but he's a loser. Satan is a loser. Okay, you understand? He's he's not a winner. He's a loser, and he's going to be a loser throughout eternity as well. Too, he's the God of our create our he's our creator. Uh, it is he who has made us, talking about God. You know, the one that breathed into man the breath of life. Way back in the Garden of Eden, God breathed into Adam and Eve. They're the Adam, the, the breath of life. And they became a living being, a living soul. He gave us our being. Believe it or not, you didn't evolve from an ape. You know, that's, that's pretty sad, isn't it, for the person who thinks that they evolved from an ape. Uh, there's some people that kind of act that way, but, uh, you know, they they didn't evolve from an ape. Psalm 139 says, We're fearfully and wonderfully made. You want to read an encouraging psalm, read Psalm 139 where it talks about that section, just the way God made us and the fact that he made us just exactly the way he wants us. We're fearfully and wonderfully made, designed by the master designer himself. You know how a person can believe in, in evolution is beyond my comprehension. I, I just don't, I can't understand that and never will be able to. <clears throat> you know, if we believe in God, we have to believe in the fact that he created us. And how does the Bible tell us that he created us? Back there in Genesis, you remember what it says? He created us in his image. You know, not necessarily male or female, but in his His image, he created us the way he wanted us to, to be and the way he wanted us to, with the capabilities of living the way he wanted us to live. He made that claim, and he doesn't lie. So like it or not, God created us just the way he wanted us. And, uh, you know, I could go into that a little more, but not going to. But how often have we praised him for creating us the way we are, both physically and spiritually? <laughs> you know, sometimes it's pretty hard to say, God, thank you for this back problem that I have, or thank you for this cancer that I've got, or whatever the situation might be. And sometimes it's pretty hard, isn't it? And, you know, I think God, God understands and yet he wants us to, to praise him for who he is. The believer experiences two creations. What? I bet you never heard that before, have you? The believer experiences two creations. Back when they were created, God created us. And then Second Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So when that time comes in our lives when we accept Christ for who he is and what he's done for us there on the cross, uh, we're created again into what he wants us to be. He's not only our God and our creator, but he's our shepherd. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. You know, again, so much could be said about the sheep and the shepherd uh, I don't know, I haven't had a whole lot to do with sheep. Uh, I know my dad had a couple one time that, that they were unruly. And uh, I don't know how many times I've heard Mooch say, you got to watch these unruly sheep, you know, these woolly sheep that cause problems and stuff. And, you know, of course she was saying that jokingly. But, uh, you know, sometimes sheep don't always do what they want. Somebody said if there's a hole in the fence, you have 100 sheep and there's a hole in the fence, one goes out, how many will be left? And the answer is none. They'll all follow the one. And, uh, you know, but the sheep know their shepherd, and they follow follow after him. He's our shepherd. Philip Keller has written several good books regarding this. One, The Shepherd Looks at the Good Shepherd and His Sheep. And another one, The Good Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. You know, there's weeks and weeks of messages that could be brought forth on the 23rd Psalm just and how God works with his sheep. 
But you know, I like the opening sentence of that 23rd Psalm. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want. If the Lord's our shepherd, what do we have need of? You say, well, yeah, I have need of this or I have need of that. Does God know about it? Does he care about it? Yeah, absolutely, he does. And if we have him, isn't that all we really need? I believe that it is. All our needs are met by our God, by our good shepherd, because he cares so much for his sheep. And all of his children have a multiple reasons for praising God for who he is and for his goodness to us. And then last, praise God for his attributes in verse 5. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. First of all, his goodness, one of his attributes. And, and he's got a multitude of attributes, but just a few I've listed here. Goodness, Charles Spurgeon says, this sums up, the, up his character and contains a mass of reasons for praise. This sums up his character and contains a mass of reasons for praise. Just the fact of his goodness. You know, we sometimes sing that chorus, God is so good, God is so good, he's so good to me. And then just the different ways that he meets our needs. You know, if you just stop and think for a few minutes, have you ever thought of ways in which God has been good to you? Uh, boy, there's, there's just no end, isn't there? Is there to how how good God has been to His own kids? His goodness, His mercy. Lamentations three twenty two says His mercies are new every morning, and we're not consumed because of that. Just the fact that God gives us mercy every day. Matthew seven eighteen says. God delights in mercy. Have you ever wondered what you could pray that God would that would please God? Thank Him for His mercy. Thank Him for His goodness. Thank Him for His uh, different attributes. And like I say, these are just I just listed three of them here, but there's so many more attributes. And uh, just thank Him for those. If you can't think of anything else to thank Him for, thank Him for His attributes. And uh, I'm sure that it will change. Uh, an attitude towards him and in truth Hebrews six eighteen says that it is impossible for God to lie this means whatever he says we can count on it happening God's not going to tell us a lie it will happen if he says it whether we like it or not really uh, it's going to happen if God says it's going to and all his promises are true and the ones that he has for his children are good for them as well, too. And so we need to just praise him for who he is. And like these songs that we've sang here, uh, you know, praise him, praise him. Jesus is our blessed redeemer. Uh, and then we could go on and on with that. But praise to the Godhead, I believe, is so important. Once again, Norval Hadley said, if we omit praise, we are at best like the like the nine lepers. Do you remember that story? When there were ten lepers who were healed, and after they were healed, nine of them went their own way, and one came back and thanked the Lord for healing for healing him. Uh, you can find that over in Luke, chapter uh, seventeen, verses twelve through nineteen. They cried out to Jesus for mercy and help. He heard their cry and uh, met their need. But in that, only one person came back and thanked him. You say, how can that be? Here they were healed of their leprosy, and how can that ever happen? You know, it's sad, and yet I believe it happens so often today when God does some great things for us and works in our lives in certain ways, and how soon we forget to thank him for it. You know, he wants us to praise him for those things that he does. So may I encourage each one of us to spend more time just praising God for who he is and for what he does in our lives. And this kind of joy causes us to be a joyful person. Praise God, we sang that doxology, didn't we? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. 
you know, that's us, praising him for all the things that he's done for us. So I would just, I, I hope it encourages you to think about praising God and that you do that more often, that I do that, that we do, I should say that we do that, far more often even than what we do because we have so much to be thankful for and to be praising him. So just a challenge, and uh, you can look through, well, like I say, read Psalm 103 and see how many, see if you can find more than 19, okay? I found 19, see if you can find more. If you can't find that many, I'll tell you the ones that I found. But uh, see if you can find them in there. And just uh, be thankful and praise God for those things. Let's pray. Father, thank you for who you are. We thank you that you care so much about us. We thank you that you provided our only hope of salvation through what you did there on the cross. And because of that, we have that hope. We have not, not just a, a wishy-washy type hope, but an assurance that one of these days, well, even before that, right now, we can be the kind of person that you'd want us to be. And eventually we'll get to see you face to face and spend eternity with you in heaven. But it starts now while we're alive. Once our eyes close in death, it's too late to change then. So thank you for making this all possible for us. And we just praise you for that. Thank you for this morning and for the, the few that are here. And pray that you would just bless each one of us for being here. And uh, just that you would work in our lives and help us to see you in a greater degree. And so thank you for these things. We pray in your name. Amen.